very good evening to everyone we are here with another session but this today is the session for everyone to understand the awareness program and this awareness program is about the world cancer day and that awareness program is taken forward by dr shrinidhi who completed her bnys from alwas college of naturopathy and yogic sciences mod bidri in this year of 2020 and she is currently practicing in naturopathy and yoga in puttur karnataka i welcome you on this platform ma'am for this very wonderful day to give understanding of cancer and to give awareness of this like awareness program today's session thank you ma'am thank you uh, we'll start okay uh so i'll be speaking on cancer uh like we'll be understanding about cancer uh, what is cancer and what are the incidents prevalence what is the status going on in globally as well as in india uh so yeah next slide so cancer uh, it is a disease where Uh, the single cell undergoes a genetic transformation in a malignant uh, into a malignant cell uh, so it is uh, characterized by multiplication of cell and uh, this happens not only in a single day it takes a long time um, like it there will be um, genetic mutation that uh, causes abnormal multiplication of the cell uh, leading to invasion to the adjacent cells or tissues or distal organs so there are uh, basically four categories of cancer uh, that is carcinoma sarcoma leukemia and lymphoma among these carcinoma are the it is the most uh, commonly found uh, cancer uh, carcinoma it is uh begins with the skin or the tissue that covers the surface of internal organs and the glands what happens here is the cell starts to multiply and uh it starts to form solid tumor this gives a uh, it pressurizes over the uh the uh surface or uh, the glands it pressurizes on that and uh, there might be pain condition or you might get some symptoms like uh, bleeding or any sorts of any sort of uh, symptoms so example is uh, prostate cancer most commonly found uh, in male and breast cancer lung cancer colorectal cancer sar coma it begins in the tissue that supports and connects to the body it can develop anywhere uh, such as uh, fat uh, muscles nerve tendons joints um, and leukemia this is the cancer of the blood leukemia begins when healthy blood change and grow uncontrollably lymphoma uh, is a cancer that begins in the lymphatic system next coming to the problem statement uh, here i'll be just saying uh, the statistics in 2012 and last year that is 2020 so in 2012 the the cancer worldwide burden rose to an estimated 14 million new cases per year which was then expected to rise to 22 million annually within two decades and in, at the same time the death rates were predicted to rise from 8.2 million annually to 13 million per year uh next slide uh, that was in the year 2012 last year on 14th of december uh, iarc that is international agency of research on cancer uh they released updated globocan globocan is the survey uh, done for the globally 
in the year 2020 uh, here the global cancer burden rose to 19.3 million cases and 10 million death cases in 2020 so among all these uh, most commonly found cancer is the breast cancer lung cancer and prostate cancer one in every four women are diagnosed with breast cancer globally next so this is the pie chart that uh, shows the statistics of uh, how many cases are seen like 24% uh, is uh, it accounts for breast cancer, 9.4% accounts for colorectal, and 8.4% is the lung cancer, and 6.5% is the cervix. So these major uh, groups, they are found in the uh, middle age to old age uh, females. Next is for the males. In male, the most common is lung and the prostate cancer. Lung constitutes for... 14.3% uh, of total cancer, prostate is for 14.1 and colorectal is 10.6. So these three are the most common found cancer. So this was globally. Next coming to the uh, statistics in India in 2020. Next. Uh, so here in India, uh, Male, there was incidence of uh, 6,79,421, uh, that is 94.1 per 1 lakh of uh, male patients. And among female, there was 7,12,758, that is 103.6 per 1 lakh of female patients in the year 2020. So, uh, one in every 68 male, they'll be getting lung cancer. One in 29 female will be getting breast cancer. And one in nine, they are going to develop cancer uh, during their lifetime. So among these, the most common, as I said, is uh, lung, mouth, and prostate cancer, which constitutes of total 36% of all cancers in male. And in female, uh, again, breast cancer, cervix cancer, uh, uterus cancer, ovarian cancer, which constitutes for 53% of all the cancer. And it is declared as the second leading cause of death last year. So coming to the process, how it happens, it is a long, complex, successive process. It does not take uh, one or two months to develop. There is continuous uh, mutation of the uh, genes, there will be multiplication, and then there will be uh, production of some uh, signs and symptoms, then patient go to the doctor and then it is diagnosed. Here, uh, for the cancer cell to develop, the main two categories of genes play a major role, normally uh, for a cell to multiply. They are proto-oncogen and tumor suppressor gene. These two genes, they, um, they work hand in hand to control the cell division. But whenever there is any uh, mutation in the gene, what happens, any of the two genes, what happens is these proto-oncogenes, they get converted into oncogenes. And, uh, that results in the uncontrolled cell division and shift in the cellular function. So what happens? The cell gets converted into a malignant state, thus leading to cancer state. So this causes coming to causes, it is a multifactorial cause, uh, major lifestyle induced and the genetic. Lifestyle induced includes tobacco, alcohol, dietary factors, occupation, and drug-induced or radiations. Tobacco causes, uh, tobacco constitutes the major part of the uh, cancer. Alcohol, again, uh, it, tobacco and alcohol and dietary factor. These are the three main 
cause that leads to cancer. Genetic, again, it's a hereditary cause. So the alarming sign of the symptoms will be unexplained weight loss, persistent hoarseness of the or cough. There will be excessive bleeding. In men, it can be uh, from nose or from mouth, or it can be during uh, excessive bleeding in stools. And in female, it can be uh, due to uh, menstrual cramps, or uh, it can be if it is a breast cancer, there will be a discharge along with the breast discharge. Uh, there will be some blood. And then uh, there will be lump or hardening in the breast. There will be changes in the warts or mole, like uh, shape or size, or there will be color changes in the mole. And these symptoms, they, continues, they continuously get worse even along with the treatment. Now coming to the individual cancer, uh, oral cancer, there'll be warning signs of persistent white and red patches, white or red. There'll be fixation of the tongue. So the person won't be able to uh, talk properly. They won't be, uh, there'll be inability to open the mouth completely and non-healing ulcers will be present. Next. Next, coming to the lung cancer. This here, there'll be persistent cough, hemoptysis, that is bleeding, uh, along with the sputum. There'll be shortness of breath, chest pain, wheezing might be there sometimes. Colorectal cancer, it is similar to hemorrhoids. Uh, there'll be blood in stool, Persistent bloating will be there, changes in the bowel habits and constipation. And even sometimes you might get ulceration. <clears throat> Here now, prostate and uh, prostate cancer, there will be uh, dysuria, pain during urination, troubled urination, that is, uh, there will be urgency. Uh, then uh, Decreased force in urination. Uh, you can find uh, blood in semen, then discomfort in uh, pelvic region, or even erectile dysfunction. Next, uh, coming to cervical cancer. Here, there will be unusual vaginal bleeding, abnormal discharge, and some symptoms will be similar to dysmenorrhea. That is, uh, you'll get cramps. Uh, you might get cramps. Uh, lower back pain that may radiate to both the legs and pain and swelling in the legs will be unexplained weight loss and reduced appetite. Next is breast cancer. So there will be <clears throat> new lump in the breast or armpits, swelling. There might be irritation or dimpling in the skin around the areola. Then uh, you uh, there will be redness or flaky skin, pain around the areola, there will be unusual discharge from the breast, sometimes with blood, and changes in the shape and size. <clears throat> Next is uh, skin cancer. So, uh, most common symptom is increase in the number of moles. There will be new growth or there will be what? Then, uh, if there is increased number of moles, you should look for what are the changes taking in the place, like whether it is having any symmetry or asymmetry. Uh, border, you should look for whether it is demarcated or diffused border. Color, you should look. And diameter, whether the diameter is increasing or decreasing, evolving. These are the things you need to observe and source. Source will be non-healing in nature. Next, coming to the bladder cancer. There will be blood in urine, hematuria, pain during urination, dysuria, dribbling of the urine. The patient will be unknowingly, there will be dribbling of urine. And frequent UTI will be present. Next, coming to the laryngeal cancer, there will be irritation in the throat 
and the persistent hoarseness will be there, sore throat. They will feel like as if some uh, something is stuck in the throat, so lump in the throat, and difficulty in swallowing, pain during swallowing will be present. So these were the signs and symptoms, warning symptoms of cancer. Next, coming to the screening. Screening, just with the help of screening, 75% of cancer can be detected. What is screening? It is just search for unrecognized malignant cell through rapid test. For each cancer, there is separate screening method. The much earlier you detect, the more effective will be the treatment for screening uh, cancer. Next, uh, so there are three methods of screening, mass screening, mass screening at single site and selective screening. Mass screening is nothing but <clears throat> where the group of people as uh, in the general, they are uh, screened and uh, mass screening at a single site uh, is a screening where people, uh, for example, a group of people are taken uh, for only cervical screening or only lung screening, lung cancer screening, uh, all that. And selective screening is uh, done for the people who are at higher risk. That is uh, people with the uh, older age or who having history of uh, Family, familial history those who are having, so they'll be given the screening. <clears throat> Next one. <clears throat> so this shows what all screening when should be when it should be done. So breast cancer uh, mammogram every two years in women between seven fifty to seventy five years have to undergo. So for cervical cancer, a regular pap test, HPV test, or both can be done from the starting of age 21 till 20, uh, 65. This is in women. And in men, lung cancer, uh, CT scan every year if the, patient, if the person is a long-term heavy chain smoker between 55 to 80 years of age group. And in colonoscopy, Colon cancer, uh, colonoscopy should be done once in 10 years. Or if the person is prone uh, to the cancer, if he's having a uh, familial history, more often tests should be done in age group between 50 to 75. Coming to prostate cancer, here um, PSA, a test in men between 50 to 74 years of age group should be done. And they should speak to the doctor if they are having any uh, symptoms regarding these uh, warning signs. They should be speaking. Next up. So who is under un risk? People with old age who are heavy alcoholics under uh, tobacco, tobacco chewing or the person who are having chronic inflammation or who are under a wrong diet for a long term or people who are under immunosuppression and obesity and radiation and sunlight. Coming to prevention, what prevention can be done? So these are the brief uh, Prevention that is that was uh, given by American Institute of Cancer Research. So first is being healthy. One must maintain the BMI and um, maintain a good healthy lifestyle by having good balanced food. Being physically active is equally essential and limiting the consumption of sugar sweetened drink uh, going for aerated drinks or alcohol, it should be limited. <clears throat> and the any other supplements other than cancer, supp uh, supplements given during cancer should be avoided. And 
processed meat or red meat this should be avoided like eating in time and reducing the amount of non vegetarian food uh, limiting the consumption of fast food other than processed and <clears throat> once the person is diagnosed with cancer all these uh, things must be kept in mind and go for a good balanced diet next next uh, now what is the role of naturopathy and yoga naturopathy must first understand the root cause that is uh, the previous slide yeah so here in this a uh, tree itself we can understand that uh, self indulgence violating the nature's law is the root cause we must understand then ignorance all these will lead to uh, development of cancer and again uh, it is not a, a month one or two months cancer it takes a long time to develop so it is uh, first there will be accumulation of uh, morbid matter then there will be abnormal composition of blood and lymph when there is accumulation of morbid matter there will be changes in the uh, composition of blood and lymph that leads to lower vitality and accumulation of uh, poison in the system that leads to various health conditions <clears throat> so what does a naturopathy doctor does they along with the conventional medicine there should be a uh, counseling done because when a patient gets to know that he is diagnosed with the cancer the first and foremost thought what he gets is the fear of death most of the people uh, they have this misconception that if a person is diagnosed with a cancer it he is not getting to get cured and the ultimate result will be the death so the main uh, responsibility of the doctor is to uh, control the emotions of uh, make him understand about the treatment that he is receiving and then uh, give all the naturopathy uh, treatments okay next yeah this is the same thing understanding the root cause that is accumulation of morbid matter abnormal composition of the blood lim and lower vitality next okay this panchatantra has to be followed uh, for the prevention of cancer that is waking up early in the morning and starting uh, with the prayer as soon as you get up you must uh, join your hands be thankful to the god and then wake up with palming and then uh, do the daily routine and start with the regular exercise for at least 1 hour and then at least 2 cs of water one must drink in a day having two meals a day that is um, morning and in the afternoon lunch trying and avoiding a uh, dinner heavy dinner in night and fasting once in a week next so uh, this is the brief uh, chart reg re regarding the naturopathy treatment so there are three phases preventive curative and rehabilitation so in prevention what we can do first and foremost again counseling then uh, explaining the patient regarding the mindfulness how to be mindful uh, while doing any work whether it is having your lunch or doing your work whenever we do our work we must uh, remove all the 
external thoughts and be at that moment experience what's going on in our mind and put it into the put it into action and then reducing the exposure trying not to uh, exposing our body uh, to radiations like x ray or ct scan uh, such kind of radiation and then behavioral changes like changing our lifestyle behavioral and circadian rhythm changes here yeah, we must explain them uh, the life lifestyle and <clears throat> the importance of time to time doing the things on time like waking up early in the morning getting the things done having food on time and uh, early to bed next coming to a uh, curative here that is during a cancer treatment uh, one must along with the conventional therapy we must also uh, encourage them in uh, having a balanced diet undergoing a good uh, yoga uh, therapy then hydrotherapy uh, then coming to the rehabilitation or palliative that is after after the cure uh acupressure or acupuncture uh, can be given hydrotherapy yoga therapy and physical rehabilitation like physiotherapy and diet therapy should be given a diet should be more of constructive in nature next role of yoga in cancer okay so in yoga uh, the eight limbs of yoga these eight limbs has to be followed that is yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana okay the so yama are the five social ethics ahimsa practice practicing uh, ahimsa satyasthaya and brahmacharya aparigraha that is kindness being kind now in yoga it is said the past karma results in what we get in present karma, uh, present life so one has to uh, practice kindness truthfulness non stealing and uh, moderation generosity and then five niyamas uh, that is saucha santosha tapa swadhyaya and ishwara pranidana that is uh keeping the self and the surrounding clean being content of what we are doing and performing austerity <clears throat> giving a self study and surrendering to the god the third is the asana uh we must encourage the patient in uh, uh, performing asanas uh, care should be taken not to exhaust the patient uh, while telling the patient to do asanas and pranayama uh, should be given uh, pranayama the thing should be kept in mind is that um, not again not to exhaust the patient uh, giving more of cooling pranayama uh like nadi shuddhi pranayama uh chandra anuloma viloma such pranayama should be given yeah these uh, four main points should be kept in the mind during uh administrating the yoga to patient next next coming to panchakosha theory here uh the they will be okay there are five sheets of uh sheets in a human body that is starting from the basic physical body level annamaya kosha 
then going to the pranamaya, manomaya, vijnanamaya, and anandamaya kosha. So, uh, <clears throat> any disease to occur, there will be agitation at the level of manomaya kosha. Whenever there is any uh, manomaya kosha, when there is agitation in this level, this causes disturbance in the life force. And when there is disturbance in the life force, that results in the, uh, the uh, presence of uh, symptoms in the physical level, physical body level. So uh, one has to control the mind. That can be done by uh, practicing of yoga, pranayama and meditation. Okay, Next level. Next uh, slide. Yeah. So these are the things to be followed. Asana, pranayama, meditation. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Thank you. I hope you were able to understand. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was very good because the concept was covered from the basic what is cancer types of cancer symptoms and then it leads to the management which everyone are looking forward to understand even as a doctor as a student and as who will watch the session as a venice program so, yeah so thank you so much ma'am to come on our platform and share your perspective to the same thing which we learn but we do not able to spread the same so your perspective is so good and thank you so much ma'am for this the nice presentation with a very small period of time, half an hour. So, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah.